Hello and welcome to Nikolai's Genetics Lessons and today's question is a biologist doing a long-term study on a wild spider population observes increased variation in silk sickness. Which of the following could the spider population be experiencing? And here is the variance of the answers. Let me start with the end of this list, stabilizing selection. And this picture is going to be example of stabilizing selection. Here this bell-shaped curve represent distribution of the phenotypes. And as you see, these phenotypes here is going to be extreme phenotypes, for example, extremely small, extremely large. And according to this population, this population can be under conditions when these extreme phenotypes would be not in favor and uh, the fitness is going to be less than those which are intermediate. Then generation after generation, we are going to see that this uh, frequency of these phenotypes is going to be decreased and frequency of the intermediate phenotype is going to increase. So in this case, what we are going to see, we are going to see that uh, range of the phenotypes is going to be smaller. And most of the population phenotype would be distributed around mean of the population. As you see, this is not going to be our choice. Let's move to the variant C, genetic drift. And this picture is going to be a good representation of the genetic drift. When again, we start with the population just like here. Phenotypes are distributed as a bell curve with few which extremely small, few which are extremely large, and most would be found around the mean of the population. So on the y-axis, we are going to see frequency of the certain phenotype. And on the x-axis, we are going to see a phenotype, which is in our case is going to be silk thickness. And we would see here, which is very thin, and on this side, which is very thick. But as you see, most would be intermediate phenotype. So somewhere in the middle. According to this picture, we see that those spiders with a silk which is going to be thin, uh, this phenotype is unfavorable and natural selection is going to work against it. So we say that fitness of this phenotype would be less than fitness of the phenotype with thick silk. And the result of such selection pressure would be a shift of the mean of the population to the right or to the uh, more thick silk in these spiders. Now the question, are we going to observe increased variation in silk thickness? In this case, actually, no. We are going to see the shift of the phenotype, but we are not going to see that uh, variation would increase. So this is going to be a wrong answer. And next, directional selection. Actually, we are going to see the same picture like in genetic drift. The only difference between genetic drift and directional selection is going to be that genetic drift usually happens due to, for example, migration or, for example, some selection pressure on the population, which is natural. But directional selection usually is a process which humans apply to, say, animals or plants and select certain phenotypes preferential to other phenotypes. So creating a shift in the phenotypes in a population. So as you see, this is also going to be the wrong answer. We are not going to see increased variation. Actually, we are going to see decrease in variation. Now let's take a look what is a disruptive selection. And this last picture is going to be a good example. Again, you see vertical line. It works against this most popular phenotype, which is intermediate. But for some reason, uh, phenotypes which is extremely thin or extremely thick would be more favorable than this intermediate. For example, in this population, uh, this spider may catch flies, which are going to be very small and thin. Silk would be preferential 
or there are also other bugs for which sick silk would be preferential and intermediate would be unfavorable uh, phenotype which is going to be not as effective as these two extremes. Then what we are going to see, we are going to see that number or frequency of this extreme phenotypes generation after generation is going to increase. And as a result of the disruptive selection, we are going to see after a certain number of generations increased variation in sick silkness. So take a look, we have now much broader range of the phenotypes. And there is no single mean here for this population. He is going to be one mean and he is going to be another mean. So as you see, our choice is answer A. And this is all for today. Subscribe and see you in the next video. Goodbye.